Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. Uh, We've looked at this passage earlier on, but uh, I thought it would be helpful to look at it again, uh, particularly because Jesus comments on the, um, the petition that we are looking at today. So uh, we'll look at verse 5 of Matthew 6 on through verse 15. Hear now the word of God. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will, will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil." For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Well, let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you again that we can uh, come together to worship you and to be fed through your word. We pray that you would now instruct us in this very important um, truth and passage of Scripture, and that uh, we would be both those who are forgiven and are able to forgive. And uh, so work in us, O Lord, we pray by your Spirit and Word. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. And uh, let's look together at what the uh, Heidelberg Catechism says about this petition. That's page 895 in the back of your Trinity Psalter hymnal, Lord's Day 51, question 126. It's at the very bottom of that page, page 895, looking at Lord's Day 51. I'll ask the question, let's answer it together. What does the fifth petition mean? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors means... Because of Christ's blood, do not impute to us, poor sinners that we are, any of the transgressions we do or the evil that constantly clings to us. Forgive us just as we are fully determined as evidence of your grace in us wholeheartedly to forgive our neighbors. One of the uh, best, I think, illustrations of this petition was given by Corey Tinboom, who I was able to uh, uh, hear speak when I was quite a bit younger. Um, growing up in my parents' home, she was in our area, I lived in the, the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. It's where I grew up, and she came to the area and uh, spoke, uh, uh, I believe, at one of the large churches in the area, and so a number of people gathered to hear her speak, and, uh, and, and, and I cannot say that it was at that speech that I heard this, but I heard her say this at another speech um, where uh, she was speaking to this audience, and uh, afterward, um, after her time you know, where she spoke, people wanted to come up and talk to her and so forth and shake her hand. And, you know, she was that kind of a celebrity, if you put it that way. (coughs) And so she was shaking people's hands and this uh, elderly man came forward and she actually recognized him as one of the Nazi guards that was in her concentration camp. He was a bad guy. And uh, she said at first when she saw him, she could not extend her hand. You know, if you know the story of Corey Ten Boom, she and her family were put into concentration camps, and uh, her sister was killed 
in the in the camp that she was at. Um, her mother and father did not survive them as uh, either, and so, uh, uh, but she did, and she later went around the nations talking about her experiencing and proclaiming the glory and grace of Christ. But she said at first when she saw this guy, she couldn't extend her hand, but then she said, she prayed, Lord, you've forgiven me, help me forgive. Wow. And that's what this is about. This illustrates, I think, Christ's concern when he teaches us to pray and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Um, and it begins with the word and, and forgive us our debts. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's closely connected to, closely tied to what we've just said before. The previous petition was give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, right? So uh, it, it sort of makes a connection between the two. Um, and uh, just thinking about that, and it's good for us, I think, to think about that. Without God's forgiveness, without God's pardon, um, all the good things in this life uh, will really be of no benefit to us, ultimately. No ultimate benefit to us. In fact, Matthew Henry uh, put it this way, Our daily bread doth but fatten us as lambs for the slaughter, if our sins be not forgiven. <laughs> so, you know, uh, our daily bread is just fattening up, us up for the slaughter. You know, um, interesting way of putting it, but, uh, but definitely you see the connection. <coughs> Excuse me. And we could, you know, say this as well, that our sins are so great and many and grievous um, that we really don't deserve a mouthful of food um, from God. And we could say that our sins are an obstacle and can become obstacles to the favors that we would receive from God. So somebody has said, whenever we pray, give us, we need to also be praying, forgive us. Whenever we pray, give us, we should also be praying, forgive us. And that's what Jesus is teaching us. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Well, what a blessing it is, isn't it, to be forgiven of our sins, of our debts by our Heavenly Father. Um, as I've often said, this is... When, when we are forgiven and, and, and are trusting in Christ, um, our Heavenly Father just is putting his arm around us and, and saying, I'm your father and you're my son, you're my daughter, and it's good between us. It's, it's you know, um, what a wonderful thing that is. Um, and I still love you dearly. So it's a wonderful blessing. So what... Uh, uh, what do we mean when we pray, forgive us our debts? Um, well, one of the things that, you know, we need to understand is that our thinking biblically, our sins are debts. Um, in other words, we have not rendered fully what is owed. Okay? We have not rendered what is owed. So if some of you might have a mortgage you have a debt. The reason is because you haven't paid the full price yet of your house. <laughs> so uh, you haven't, you know, you, you still owe a certain amount of money uh, in, in order to be out of debt. And so um, we have, in sin, failed to render to God his lawful due. Um, so what is that? Well, it's constant and perfect obedience. That is God's due. Constant and perfect obedience. And clearly, we fail. And in Adam, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And, uh, and so often, in today, we see the law as, you know, the Ten Suggestions rather than the Ten Commandments. And you know, it's like, you know, uh, so we don't understand, we, we don't recognize that that actually is what is owed God. They are commandments. They're not suggestions. There are ten commandments. That is what is owed God. And uh, rather, instead of, in, and, and instead of, you know, as, as sinners 
getting closer and closer to that perfect and constant obedience that we're called to, we add to our debt. Um, we continue sinning. Um, and, uh, you know, particularly apart from Christ, um, we get worse. Sort of like the frog um, will jump out of a pot of hot water, but not if the water begins cool and gradually becomes hot, right? You know, and, and that's kind of what happens, right? The, the drug addict never says as a child, when I grow up, I want to be a drug addict on the streets. And it never says that, right? Um, I want to be an alcoholic. No, there's slowly but sure what has happened is he's, he's gone down a certain path that has led to a certain place. Um, that's true with pornography. It's true with stealing. It, you know, just uh, all of these things. It, it, it starts very small, but then just continues to grow and grow and grow. Well, we're adding to our debt. We are continually adding to our debt um, that we owe to God. And uh, so our constant and, and, and perfect obedience is lacking. In other words, we have failed to render to God his lawful due, and therefore it is a debt. Um, we are called to give to God sincere and perfect worship. Our purpose is to glorify God and enjoy him together, and we fail that as well. And so it's no wonder that uh, Paul says in Romans 8, Therefore, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. But we're debtors to God. We're debtors to God to live for him. In, in Luke 17, verse 10, uh, Jesus had told the, the, the parable of the uh, ungrateful servant who was forgiven a little bit, and then when somebody owed him, or forgiven a lot, it, but then when somebody owed him a little bit, he wouldn't forgive. And, and Jesus says, so likewise you and you will have done all these things. You're commanded to say, we are unprofitable servants. We have only done that which was our duty to do. We are called to be worshipers of God, giving glory to God with thanksgiving and love. And we fall short of this. We are debtors. And so what does it mean when we say that we are debtors to forgive us our debts? What are we asking for? Well, the request means that we are asking that God would not charge us with the sins that we commit and daily commit. Um, we're pleading that God would accept the, the finished work of Jesus Christ, the satisfaction of Christ who paid the debt, who paid the ransom for us. So it's a pleading of God to accept that work of Christ. It's a, pray, it's a prayer for God's... Um, continuation of his pardoning grace. Continue to be gracious toward me and pardon me and forgive me. And I think it's a prayer for the sense of being forgiven and the assurance of it. Um, when we know that we're forgiven, that gives us an inner peace rather than an angst. It gives us an assurance um, rather than doubt. Um, and we, because of that, we have this ready access to God. And we go to God knowing that it is well between us. So the request is do not charge us with the sins that we commit, but rather, Lord, look to Christ. Look to Christ. What does this petition imply? Well, one, it implies a felt sense of sin. <laughs> um, don't pray, forgive, forgive us our debts when you don't think you owe it. <laughs> don't pray it if you don't think you, you owe God any debt um, or that apart from Christ, you don't. Um, there should be a felt sense of sin so that we go to Christ. Um, it is a petition of sinners to God. Um, and, it's, and not just a sense of sin, but also a sorrowful acknowledgement of it. Um, there is a sense in which we all have Paul's, oh, wretched man that I am. That, 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 oh, how have I, you know, once again offended the holy God who gave his son for me? And just that sorrowful, like, oh, how could I do that? Um, 
It's a seeking of God's mercy on the basis of Christ's redemptive work. Uh, in other words, we're not asking God to just, you know, sort of wink. And uh, No, we're saying, Lord, we are trusting in the redemption that you provided. <laughs> you know, in the salvation that you provided. Um, and it's a realization that God can righteously pardon sin. God can be the just and the justifier of those who come to him in Christ. God can righteously pardon sin. It's an acknowledgement. It, there are a couple of things. It's an acknowledgement that only God can forgive sins, but it's also an acknowledgement that God can do that righteously. He can be righteous and still forgive sins. He's not just winking at it, but he's actually dealt with it. The debt has been paid in Christ. Christ took our place. And, uh, and so uh, it's a realization of that and, and, and a rejoicing in that. And so, you know, um, I'm hoping that for you, this is not just a message about repentance and, and the request of forgiveness, but will elicit it, <laughs> will bring it about in you. Not just talk about it, but actually you will come to the Lord and say, oh Lord, please forgive my sins, forgive my debts. Um, I do want to take a moment here to... Uh, to just bring up a matter that uh, I think is at least l l alive for some people. And uh, I thought this would be an, an opportunity for me to give some clarification about it. Um, this is a request to God to forgive us our sins, acknowledging that only God can forgive sins. So... My question, or my point that I want to make right now is, um, is it appropriate for a pastor to raise his hands and to say, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven? Is that an appropriate thing? Um, I'm very hesitant to come down on it, but I do want to explain, explain to you why I don't. And the reason I'm hesitant is because there are people who I love and appreciate and look up to who, who, do, who, who, does, who do that. Um, they will raise their hand and declare to the congregation that their sins are forgiven. The reason that I am hesitant to do that uh, and uh, it's one reason. It's because I don't see one person in all of Scripture except Jesus do that. That's why. I don't see Paul raising his hand and saying, I, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. I don't see John, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. I don't see Moses, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. Um, I don't find that anywhere in Scripture. And so, so, because of that, I'm very hesitant to do that. Um, what I will do, and I do do every week, is point you to what the scripture says. That if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive your sins. And that you can be assured that your sins are forgiven. So I just want to be very clear about that. <coughs> and, uh, and that doesn't mean I couldn't be um, persuaded um, that it might be a right thing to do or a better way to do it. But um, at this point, I'm not persuaded. And because I'm not persuaded, I think it would be a dangerous thing for me to do. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, but let me be clear. The reason is because I don't find anybody else in all of Scripture who does that. I don't see an example of it. And I certainly don't see a command to do it. So without a command and without the, the example, um, I'm uncomfortable taking that on to myself. So that's the reason. Um, and I just want to be open about that to you as a congregation who I love and want to be transparent. Okay. Um, only God can forgive sins. So then, um, 
But then this, that's not everything here. Um, because the, the petition goes on, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Um, what does Jesus mean there? Well, he goes on, doesn't he? If you forgive others their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Heavenly Father your trespasses. Um, does it really mean that God will not forgive my sins if I don't forgive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it means. Um, you get in Matthew 18, that, that parable about the ungrateful servant. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also to you if you from your heart do not forgive everyone his brother their trespasses. But understand this. Your forgiveness of, of your neighbor is not the ground of God's forgiveness for you. Only the finished work of Christ is the ground for God's forgiveness of you. Only Christ's atoning sacrifice is the ground. But for me to be forgiven by God, there has to be, as I said, that sense of sin, a, a sorrow for sin, a longing for the grace of God and his mercy, um, a clinging to Christ and being assured that Christ has, has accomplished the forgiveness that I, that I need. And I think what Jesus' point is, is if you're unwilling to forgive others, you don't have that. You don't have that sense of forgiveness. You don't, you don't have that sense of your own need. For forgiveness it does not exist in you if you're unwilling to forgive your neighbor you don't have that in you it's not present in you as long as you are unwilling to forgive others so the the, the point i think is if you can't forgive others you're not really sorrowful for your own sin you you haven't really looked and don't really recognize the sinfulness of your own heart if you're unwilling to forgive others um, you're longing for uh, for that forgiveness is weak your longing for God's mercy is likely not existent if you cannot show mercy if you are unwilling to forgive others so the catechism says Forgive, just as I am fully determined, as evidence of your grace in me. So what this is saying is if you can't forgive, then you don't have the evidence of that grace in you. Um, so evidence, in other words, of our forgiveness and our desire for forgiveness is our ability to forgive. Let me repeat that. The evidence of our forgiveness and the desire for our forgiveness is our ability to forgive. And this is a repeated by Jesus. Here in this passage, again in Matthew 18, verse 35, somebody may say, but you don't know what that person has done to me. And obviously, I'm not omniscient. I don't know what that person may have done to you. But I know this. Your sin against a holy and righteous God is far worse than whatever that person's sin against you is. Understand that. You have sinned against purity, against that which is holy. You have sinned against righteousness. That person who sinned against you is one sinner against another sinner. That doesn't even come close to the offense of your sin to God. Do you follow that? And that's an important thing for us to, to grasp. Um, my sin against the holy God is far worse than any sin that anybody could do to me. And so is yours. And so Jesus gives us as, as somewhat of a comparison, doesn't he? And so does the catechism bring it out. Our forgiveness should be fashioned after God's uh, forgiveness uh, abundantly and in love. Uh, it's a, an expression then of our love 
for one another. The psalmist says in Psalm 32, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is wholly covered. That is a great blessing. That is such a wonderful blessing. And when we grasp that, when we grasp what blessing that is, it seems to me that we will then have even an eagerness to forgive our neighbors. Well, let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for, uh, for teaching us and maybe even rebuking us with your word this morning. Lord, we do cherish the forgiveness that we have in Christ Jesus. We pray that then as evidence of that forgiveness and of that grace in us that we would be forgiving to others. And uh, may that then also be evidence of our love for you and our love for our neighbor. And so, Lord, bless us, we pray, and um, sanctify us by your word and spirit. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.